Hi there. Thanks for joining me today. I have a flip through of a very big all sorts journal just that I recently completed. And uh, I thought I'd take you on a little tour of um, a book that I've been um, fondly referring to as Violet because of this bouquet of violets here from a painting by Edouard Manet. And uh, as you can see, definitely an all sorts book. Um, I wanted this book to look like it really had some stories to tell. And when we get inside, you'll see that there are still many, many pages left with your stories to tell. So um, as you can see from the cover, uh, I've already created some interesting stories to tell. Uh, there's a label here, a vintage label of, um, it's for denatured alcohol. And I loved that it said poison and it said for art on it. I loved that. I purposefully left a blank label so that you can fill it in with whatever you like and just some interesting story that maybe these little items that maybe adds to a mystery of who the first owner was or maybe there's been a few and uh, perhaps she was the first one. This is a genuine photo from either the 20s or the 30s, the person who kept this photo album simply wrote 1920s and 1930s as the dates on the pages in the photo album. But uh, you can see there's a variety of uh, genuine and um, created faux femora uh, throughout the book. So, um, I have restored the spine from the inside out, so she's strong again. And uh, let's measure her. She's a big girl. She is um, approximately seven and a bit inches. I apologize if you hear a thunderous roar, but we are having a windy day where I live. Uh, about nine and three quarter inches long. And then she has a two inch spine. So I don't know if you can see there. Two inch spine. She's, like I said, she's a big girl and she can handle it. Now, I just had the feeling that, um, as I said, I've been calling her Violet, even though her actual title is The Illustrated History of All Nations, Volume 1. And this book was originally published in 1909, so it's very old. It's over a hundred, well over a hundred years old. But uh, I had my way with her. Uh, many of the pages from the text block just weren't that interesting to put back into the book. So I found other interesting pages to put in. Although there is one beautiful map that I did put in. We'll get to it and I'll point it out to you. And of course, I also included the first page that will tell you the year of publication. So when we open her up, she's just full of color and full of um, curious things that make you want to keep turning the pages. I fussy cut this beautiful hibiscus. Uh, I thought the flowers really look nice with where the uh, print is in red. And uh, this, the end papers are actually made out of wallpaper. And uh, they're almost the same. Because they're a wallpaper border, uh, this one has the sunshine at 12 noon, I suspect. And then when we get to the end, you'll see uh, where the sun has moved to. And here's where you'll see, I had to reinforce, because the paper was 1909, it was wanting to try to crack a bit, so I've used washi tape to reinforce that fold. And here's where you'll see 
that it does say 1909. So she's an old girl. Now I took advantage to create this beautiful profile of the um, the turning the the open edge of the pages. I guess that's the word I'm looking for. These tabs can be moved. They hold papers. As you can see, where possible, I've tucked in just little pieces here and there so that it's evident what that's used for. But you can put this wherever you want. This is a vintage playing card that was uh, a gifted to me. And I just thought the colors were perfect because they're also red and blue. And it can also be put in the top. It can be put in the side. It can be moved over to somewhere else in the book. That's the nice thing about this kind of a tab. Um, you can put it wherever you want and it's also useful. Some of the tabs that you're seeing along here are permanent. So you'll have to figure that out as you go through it. But here's the other side in blue and uh, again holding papers and uh, and just really looking beautiful both uh, playing cards have uh, are, have pictures of um, pocket watches on them and this is from a book i have of tasha tudor uh, made by tasha tudor and it was a counting book this is tea dyed paper from a uh, garden diary that I have and it's got huge pages in it which is just perfect when you have the joy of making a huge book like this. It, there's 100, 324 pages approximately. I lost count. I think I added a couple more little ones in addition to that but I'm not sure. You're going to have to count. <laughs> But my last count was 324, both sides. I count both sides when I'm using, when I'm going through a book. But you're going to see tea dyed papers, you're going to see ledger papers, and you're going to see pages and folios from out of other old books. For example, this came out of a book that was from 1922. And wherever possible with old books, I've written the year of the book in pencil down in the corner um, so you'll know how old that page is and if you don't like that you can erase it. This is a vintage card that was originally a get well card. Up here it did say get better soon something like that but I trimmed that off because I just liked the artist's easel and the flowers and there's journaling room on the back. And on this blank page here, there's a little tab with a lady driving a car. And uh, I just thought she looks like, maybe if that's Violet, she's uh, an independent woman even in those days. And over here are her friends who are going for a ride with her. Like I said, lots of room for your journaling. This is the other side of that card. And I've just tucked some paper inside for you to journal on. And I made use of some of the offcuts from the wallpaper. And this also is uh, the sun at uh, 12 noon on this, this part. Here's another tab that is also a tuck spot. This one is glued in place, but it still will hold papers for you. And I've put a little bulb pin charm with some little red, white, and blue uh, beads on it. So you can leave those there or move them where you like. When you turn the page here, uh, the it's a big book that I fussy cut those hibiscus out of here on the front page and there were still two other flowers on that page and I thought why waste them so I fussy cut it out and uh, put it onto some 
uh, paper that I put through my Sizzix and then I turned it into a journaling card. So it fits back in there and there's a little bit of Edith Holden uh, there with some of her um, ivy and uh, you can't have a junk journal without a little bit of Edith in it. And again, lots of tip outs for you to journal in and have little hiding spaces. The other side of Tasha Tudor. Lots of room for you. Uh, this came from a 1957 um, music book and was also uh, gifted to me. This is from a book on how to draw from 1949 and I thought it was it went well with the music from Mozart and then the young girl playing the piano. So more tea dyed ledger paper. This is from a Dick and Jane type book. It didn't have a date of publication in it, but I remember these kinds of books from when I was in school and I can definitely say from experience these style of books were usually late 40s, 50s, and into the 60s. And it's got some pretty artwork in it. Not to waste anything, the um, page that had the picture of this little bouquet of violets of the painting by Edouard Manet, this was the page it came off of. And uh, it was the kind of book where the pages are all um, just slightly glued. You can see right there where the tiny little bit of glue to hold it in place. And so here's the information for that painting in case you were wondering about it. It's called A Bunch of Violets and Fan and it was painted in 1872. And it's part of somebody's private collection in France. Uh, there's a little tab up here. It's permanent and uh, I had to put in um, a uh, word snippet I can't resist and I also like being cheeky so it just says no kidding. <laughs> Again, lots more room. I use a six hole running stitch when I put together a hidden hollow back spine book. So you'll see they're all, all of the signatures are sewn in, in that way. And the pages are varying sizes. That's my favorite kind of book when you never know what's going to be when you turn the page. This tab here is glued in so it's there for good unless you want to take it out and move it somewhere else and just have fun with some um, collaging of your own. The joy of junk journals. Take it out and move it if you don't like it. Again, tons of room for making spreads. This is from uh, an old British book that I have and uh, it didn't have a publication date in it. But uh, at first I was a little worried that this was a headstone. It's not, it's a mile marker and it says six miles and he's not very happy right now. <laughs> it looks like his name was Fieldy. Uh, this is from, again, from a 1950s uh, teacher's uh, book for um, for teaching in the classroom. I found it on one of my thrifting um, adventures and if I haven't said it already I try my very best to create my books. They're probably 95 percent from repurposed items. All the papers, all the pages, the papers that I tea dye, I find it at thrift stores, yard sales, it's gifted to me, it's second hand, and uh, occasionally there are new things in here. If it's things that I can't manage to find second hand, I will treat myself to it, or else sometimes really, really sweet people send me wonderful things that I can't get where I live. 
So again, just lots and lots of room for your journaling. Looks like his family found him and everything worked out. Thank goodness. Mrs. Dormouse found him. More room here. 11 signatures. There's lots of page turns here. This is from an interesting book I have that has no um, words in it to tell the story. You have to look at the pictures to figure out the story. So you can make your own up as you go along. This page came from a book um, from 1922. And here's the other flower that came from the page where the where the hibiscus came from. And she is an opera singer, and she sang in the Met. Uh, I forget what year. If I get a chance, I'll pull out the book and I'll write her year there. I believe it was very early 1900s. And then there's a little ticket there. Um, it's glued in, so there's no moving that. This is from a reckoning book. Uh, it's the calendar section of it. This was prior to us having calculators, and it's from 1955. This is a tea-dyed page from a book on how to do calligraphy. And uh, this, I know this came from Nancy, but I forget what year it was. It, it's an older book. See what I mean by people have been wonderfully generous to me and it makes for some fun books when you can add in extra things uh, that have arrived in happy mail and here's that fun book without the words so it uh, just adds some nice color a little bit of tea dyed Beatrix Potter This is a greeting card, but I added a little bit of gold uh, gilding wax. This is from a vintage car. It's the kind of trip book that you would keep in your glove compartment to keep track of how much gasoline you, you uh, purchased and how many miles you went and what the odometer and speedometer said. And uh, I remember those. I'm old enough to remember this kind of book. My dad always had one in the glove compartment. This is some paper that was gifted to me from Alice. Apparently it is French. And this is from a stamp collector's book from 1950. But it still gives you lots of room for either journaling in or doing whatever kind of artwork or collaging you like to do. And lots of journal space on the back of that card. Another little tip out there. Now this tab here is movable. The uh, large rusted paper clip, which I rusted myself, is uh, makes it movable. So you can take this off and put it somewhere else in the book. I have also added a little charm onto it with a bulb pin. You can put that somewhere else if you like. And it makes, again, for to a place to hold papers or ephemera. And same with the other side. I've just put some tea dyed paper in there from a little vintage notepad. This is from an old address book for the letter L. Um, apparently that's called Monk's Hood, that flower. A little bit more Edith. The other side has some of her beautiful artwork. And a little bit of um, seam binding with, there was one more of those tickets, so I, that one is sewn and glued in place. Um, so that one's not movable, but I like where it is. And then I added on this side a little washi tape. And that's actually a stamp from Canada with a bumblebee and a little clover. And we'll be seeing those soon where I live. 
a little more Edith. Another tuck spot, and this is movable, so you can put it somewhere else in the book if you want. And I used uh, my embossing um, Sizzix to make this um, little journaling card. On this side, I did have some more leftover wallpaper, and I just thought I'm going to leave that the way it is so the new owner can have some fun with it. And, uh, although it says new, it's not new. <laughs> this is from um, a book on roses. I think I can find the date for that. I'm not sure. This is a page from out of, uh, I think it's through the looking glass. And then it has a uh, vintage... Um, I'm having a mind blank. You know what you use in in uh, school. Ugh, I'll think about it later after I've finished recording. A little bit more tea dyed um, Beatrix Potter. This is some vintage ledger paper as opposed to just tea dyed, newer tea dyed. With this spread from the gardening journal, uh, the flip up I made pockets out of. So over here is from a illustrated dictionary, a vintage illustrated dictionary. I added some um, an off cut of some um, paper that I had left over, a little bit of tea dyed paper from a um, accounting book. And then here's a little pocket where I added in the usual uh, two nanas bookmark that go into my regular journals. I don't put two nanas bookmarks in my Sunnyside Skinny Dip journals, but uh, in my big uh, traditional journals, yes, a, a two nanas bookmark goes in there. A lot of the pages that I've cut myself, I used my tear edge ruler just for a little bit of interest's sake. Page from a bird watcher's book. This is from a really old book and I've written the year. It's probably on the other side. It's from the 1800s and it's on proper etiquette. This is a receipt. It was from Nancy. I believe when we get to the other side, we'll see. I think it's 1931. <coughs> Pardon me. A little bit more Edith. When you have a book this big, there's lots of room to add Edith. So here's the other side of that receipt. And yes, 1931. And yes, 1897, Rules on Etiquette. So it, that's, uh, that's a precious little page to tuck into a, a journal. Um, I still had a little bit left over of the um, embossed paper that I used to make that journaling card. So I made a tab. It's movable because of the rusted paper clip. And I just added... A little bit of lace here just to make it pretty and here is a vintage uh, bridge tally sheet so that's I just tucked that in there because you know me I can't leave things empty another page out of that uh, British children's school reader book this is from a Joan England book and uh, she just passed away recently I only have one of her books, so those pages are precious. This is from a book I recently found that's just full of botanical uh, specimen drawings. And then on this one, I made a... Uh, I forget what was under there, but it wasn't very nice, so I had... I used one of the extra pages and just created a tuck spot and glued it down over top and I've put in an extra page 
for uh, an extra pocket, pardon me, for a journaling spot. Look at how cute her illustrations were. Are. And again, our little mouse friend. My goodness, he went on an adventure. With this tab, it's movable. And these this tab is made from the photo booth photos from the Tim Holtz collection. And uh, I have glued this corner shut, but then I also stapled it. And I used some alcohol ink to make the staple look a little bit rusty. And I thought maybe one of the previous owners had um, a beloved suitor at one point, and that was him. And that uh, there she is later in life reminiscing about uh, one of her loves that she had in her life. I don't know. It's little things that I dream about. And then there's a, um, a tarot card there, and I'm not sure what, um, what the seven means. So... Uh, you can find that out. This is a book from 1940 on wildflowers. And uh, a plate, a book with plates of various birds. Not sure uh, the copyright date of that. This little tab is just glued right on, but the other side is tuckable. So the one side is simply there. Uh, it's got a little, a cute little baby on it. And it's just there because it's cute. And this one is pretty, but it's also useful. And I just put in a little tea dyed Rolodex card with uh, a little bit of um, reproductive scrap. And these pages are again from that 1922 book. This is the only page here coming up from the original text block. The rest of the pages uh, were mostly full of um, black and white photos that really weren't very, I didn't, I didn't find them interesting, but this was pretty. So I wrote down here from original text block 1909, just so that you know. Like I said, there's just so much room for you to um, write and fill in even more. Wink and blink and a nod, that's from that 1922 book of knowledge. And uh, the other side of the wildflower book. This is a tea dyed book on butterfly watching. So I, um, it was two separate pages. So I had to find interesting ways to glue them together. So one side has faux cellophane tape and the other side has tea dyed paper, just scrap. Some more pages out of the calligraphy book that I tea dyed. This is out of a vintage uh, seed catalog that um, I'm not sure whether Nancy found it or Kelly found it when we spent our day in Aberfoyle. But that was wonderful. That was a nice day. And this is another one of those movable tabs. So, um, and this larger Rolodex card, uh, that beautiful tea dyeing lace is done by Nancy from Wishes and Weeds, the queen of lace tea dyeing. I I say I will put that up against anyone her lace tea dyeing this is uh, I used the letter I found the letter V in with all my letters at, for violet so um, this is from a book that I found at a thrift store with all kinds of old pictures so I made the tab out of that this is from a book from 1923 a tiny little book and inside were just little interesting quotes and little quotes from scriptures and uh, I just glued it in and then I stitched it actually by hand there. Over here um, I was using this paper to back some of my journaling cards 
So I didn't want to waste what a cool tab. This was gifted to me from Alice. Uh, so I, I inked it and then I stamped on it and it's now a tuck spot. And this is tea dyed from a vintage um, uh, cards for practicing um, your music theory for children, or I guess adults if you're learning. I learned piano later in life. When, when my children started taking lessons, I did too. I didn't get as far as they did, but I, I was pretty proud of myself. Here, I've just tucked in a few extra pages. So they were left over in the book, and I figured I'm just going to tuck them in and let the new owner do what they will with these extra pages. And then here on the last page is um, a pocket that I made. My husband actually likes to buy these tiny little pies. He's diabetic, and our grocery store sells these little pies. And he likes to get them, so that way he knows that when he's finished that little pie, it's all gone. And whereas with a big pie, it's very tempting to, to have another slice. But when he gets one of these little pies, um, when he's done, he's done. So I, I'm proud of him for doing that. And I used alcohol ink to make the window look a little more aged. And then I also used ink to make it look a little more vintage, even though it isn't. But it does say old-fashioned cherry pie. And in Canada, we're so lucky to be bilingual. And uh, so it also says tarte au cerises. So um, pardon my poor pronunciation. That's the best I can do. And this was uh, a little notepad created by uh, a friend who sent me in Happy Mail. Camille sent this. And it's got that pretty Tim Holtz cloth um, tape. So I tucked that in there. And here's the other side of some of that wallpaper border. And you can see it's evening and the sun is going down. Oh, I'm going to sneeze. I was able to hit pause in time. And here, as usual, I have put in my little, my little tag that uh, I put my signature CABC. Those are all my initials. And it says 2024. So um, that is that big book that has become known to me as Violet, but you can name her whatever you choose if you're the kind of person like me that names things. And uh, I just love her profile of all those tabs. And even up here, all the little lace and tickets sticking out. This definitely is a journal with stories to tell and stories yet to tell. So this will be available in my Etsy shop a little later today. I'll write in the in the description down below approximately what time she should be available in my Etsy shop. But it usually works out to be around 5 or 5.30 New York City time. I'm in the same time zone as New York, even though I'm not there. I'm, I'm, over, I'm over in Toronto, near Toronto, east of Toronto. So thank you for joining me to, for the flip through of Violet. I hope you enjoyed it. I certainly enjoyed making her. And uh, she's definitely a journal writer's journal. And, uh, and if you're interested in Violet, I hope you'll uh, pop over to my Etsy shop and take a look-see and see if maybe she's for you. For Canada and for uh, mainland US, uh, the delivery for Violet will be free. Um, and the link for my Etsy shop is also down below. So thanks again, and we'll talk soon. Bye.